This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Artie! I'm gay. <laughs> what happened as a rebuttal? Mr. Farnie's death was instantaneous. Hold it! Do you truly believe that Mr. Farnie died instantaneously? I have the murder report right here. Mr. Farnie died instantaneously of shock due to being stabbed in the chest. Of shock? Not of, um, getting stabbed in the chest? Wait, why do we have the autopsy report? Because they only trust Francisca. We're like, <laughs> Who hasn't done anything except just well, be like, no, this make dude... sure you get my good side. Yeah, this, <laughs> so these, these two, the, Detective Bad's like, kids, but he's only calling us <laughs> boy. Kids. And also like, yeah. Isn't that the, the weird, the weird, kids. the janitor from the Brand Steeper is like, kids. <laughs> just like sweeping the floor. It's like, that guy what? hates kids. <laughs> I'm going to look that up later. I don't know. There, you see? It's been documented, clear as day. Oh, yeah, I want to say, it's like, like, literally, like, Robert's like, oh, like, hi, like, Mr. Janitor. It's just like, kids. <laughs> sweet. Sounds great. <laughs> Morning, Morning, Mr. Grizzly. Hmm. Huh. Kids. Ah! <laughs> From this, it's obvious that Mr. Faraday died. Well, duh. <laughs> Mr. Faraday shot Mr. Rail before he died. Do you have any basis for that statement? Your foolishness has no end, does it? Now, I hate to repeat myself, however, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously. I just realized how absolutely white Francisca is. Like, oh. super pale. Oh yeah, she's a she's a white girl in space. Getting her <laughs> senior photos at the courthouse. Hashtag white girl. <laughs> white girl. <laughs> Thug -like. That's all the basis I need. Alright, so if Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, then he must have attacked Mr. Rell before being stabbed. You're finally beginning to catch on, I see. And Mr. Rell, while on the brink of death, stole Mr. Faraday's knife. Hold it. So you believe that the dying Mr. Rell stole the knife from Mr. Farday? Mr. Rell became desperate as he did not want to die. Human beings can do amazing things when they're put to the test. That's what the prosecutors love saying to be like, Oh yeah, of course this guy like threw the person on the fence while being mortally wounded. Yeah, <laughs> to be fair though, fight or flight is real. It is, but I mean... Getting shot in the heart with a gun. It doesn't matter I'm how much adrenaline alive. gets pumped. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, the two men struggled. And in the end, Mr. Rell was able to grab the knife and stab Mr. Faraday. The messy condition of this room is a testament to their struggle. Uh, Francisca, I'm gonna say you might want to get your uh, mold checked because right now it's barely noticeable, but in the future it's a lot darker. Which, oh, uh, the mole on the side of her face? Yeah, yeah, She's like, it's fine, I don't have cancer. Hmm, <laughs> yes, my logic is perfectly sound. Can you really say that it's perfect? What are you insinuating? Nothing. However, I can't let what you said slide by without further inquiry. One must be clear and precise. So if you could append that statement to your testimony. Fine. They struggled, and Mr. Rell used the last of his strength to counteract it. About this statement... Mr. Rell used all of his remaining strength to take the knife and defend himself. One can easily see that they had a violent struggle. Of course, it's nothing compared to what my riding crop can do. How does one compare the damage her crop can do and the state of this room? Furthermore, all the plastic bags on this floor in this room. Okay, stupid question. What's her riding crop again? Is that her whip right now? I think now? that's her whip. Oh, I was thinking. I think. When I heard when I hear the phrase riding crop, the first thing I think of is like a John Deere lawnmower. <laughs> you should see the damage <laughs> that can do. She's just, just like, I'm tearing up on her John Deere truck. No, but, and that makes so much sense because it's like, Francisca, how can you get to the courthouse if you can't even drive? She's like, I got this. <laughs> lawnmower. She's driving like the enormous one where like the wheels are bigger than like normal people's bikes. Yeah. Or, or like, I kind of pictured her like riding like the equivalent of a Pona with her like whip being like, go, we have to get to the trial in five minutes. I can totally see Francisca riding a horse. To yeah. She, d I actually thought she would. Like the judge once I, gets to, rides a horse. When I saw her, th what? There's that one thing where he's like, Bailiff, get my steed. We have to leave at once. I think <laughs> not, that does not mean he rides a horse. I think it would be amazing if he did. But I think that literally just means that um, 
Like some people call their their uh, cars car. weird things. <laughs> yeah, it's my like friend, your, your friend, my friend who is like, everyone get in the car. We're going to ride the beige Baden. I'm like, <laughs> yes, he's, he's very gay. He's very gay. But <laughs> he's very nice. So it's awesome. Yeah. We're scattered there due to the fight. Is there anything else that can explain? I can explain for you. No, that will be fine. Those are the facts of this case. Claiming speculation as fact already, don't you feel that the evidence is a bit lacking? You'll find all of the evidence you need just by looking around this room. Wait! The window looks different now. Do you see that? No. It went from... Yes! It went from having, like, an air conditioning unit in front of it to now having just bars. Oh, there are bars! You're... F okay, from the perspective you saw, it was, there was a building on the other side of the window. Oh. That's why. Who... How big is this courthouse? I would imagine it's on, like, sea level. Like, it wouldn't this be This is tall. the third floor. Oh. I guess the courthouses, yeah. I've never yeah. really been to... Courthouses been to have a bunch courthouse. of different courts. Yeah, but I thought it was all, like, on one floor. Because what if you have, like, a witness who can't, um... What if you have Acro as a witness and he needs the stinking elevator? We, we have an elevator. Okay. Not every place <laughs> has an elevator. Remember? Entrance Stag died in the elevator. <laughs> The oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mr. Faraday collapsed on the top of Mr. Rell. That sounds like a bad fan fiction. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> that sounds like something that they'd make for, like, Edgeworth. In addition, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, making a counteract impossible. Furthermore, the room is a total mess from their fight. <laughs> I dare say there's more evidence here than you could whip, whip at. It looks like she's becoming more and more confident. And, looking at this place, she might have a right to be. After all, everything here seems to support her theory. Except for this tea. It looks like you're starting to see my point. I've as good as won our little competition. There's something strange about Francisca's theory. I should compare her claim with the data I've gathered thus far. I just know there's a contradiction somewhere. Got him. You got him? Yeah, it's the tea set that has absolutely nothing destroyed on it. No, actually, it's not. Oh. It's, um, the last of his strength to counteract. Attack. Counterattack. Counterattack. It's okay, Francisca's jet lag from being like, on her oh. horse. <laughs> 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 her, I like the idea of her riding the lawnmower better, The though. lawnmower is funny, because, like, actually you can drive a lawnmower once you're 12. I want fan art of, like, 13-year-old Francisca riding one of those giant, like, whipping, John Deere... Whipping the engine to try and go faster. Or even just her, like... <laughs> Von Karma's like, my car broke down. You're gonna have to take me off the lawnmower. <laughs> faster! Papa, this lawnmower can only go at five miles an hour. No! <laughs> no! We're gonna be late for the spa! <laughs> can you imagine Francisca going to the spa? I don't Yeah, know. I can totally imagine Francisca going to the spa. Maybe. Maybe I can also see her as being like the does person she... that the spa ladies like love to see. Does she always have? Yes, yeah, she would be. Does she always wear gloves? Because she might yeah, be. She always. might be like Sailor Moon, who like paints her nails and then the gloves go on her while ever she's transforming. I don't know why magical girls do that. They'll have like perfectly painted nails and then they'll cover them with gloves and then they'll be like, "We fight crime and evil." Woo! I'm like, but you while have perfect. While looking pretty. <laughs> but you have perfect nails that no one will see. It makes no sense. So maybe she's like that. So I don't actually remember. I'm pretty sure it's the bag here. The last of the struggle. I'm sure. Because how would that have gotten there? Without yeah. It? Objection! There's a clear contradiction in your line of logic. And where, pray tell, would that contradiction be? Maybe nowhere? Exactly! Nearer! Could I have done it all wrong? At this rate, I'll lose the truth for all eternity. I need to pay more attention to her testimony. Wow, imagine the arguments they must get into in this household. Like, I know I already, like- You're a fool! No, I you're a fool! I already pitched the idea that, like, they were having an entire case around who ate the cookies in the cookie jar. Meanwhile, it's just Von Karma, and he's just like, I won't. Oh, I how about the fact that Gumshoe didn't hear a sign of a struggle at all? Oh, yeah, it's probably that. Objection. Yeah. Forgot about that. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> if the two men were fighting, their struggle would have surely caused quite a bit of noise. However, Detective Gumshoe testified that he heard absolutely nothing. Well, Detective Gumshoe is completely ridiculous. 
Ha! You place too much faith in that detective's testimony, you know. But for the sake of argument, let's say there wasn't a fight. How then did Mr. Rell get his hands on the knife? Mr. Faraday's bag was sitting right here in lobby number two. It is not hard to imagine that perhaps Mr. Rell saw a chance and took it out at some point. So, what you're saying is this. Mr. Rell took a chance when he saw the opportunity and took the knife from the bag. And then Mr. Faraday shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed? Hmm. Isn't there something strange in Francisca's statement just now? No, it all makes sense. That would make no sense. It does all add up. So then there's no problem, right? No! <laughs> Miles Edgeworth. Yes? Taking random shots in the dark is unbecoming of a disciple of Von Karma. Now take a step back and think for a change! Is Francisca's explanation of Fane's really perfect? I'm going to carefully review what she said once again in my head. Mr. Rell took a chance when he saw the opportunity and took the knife from the bag. And then Mr. Faraday shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed. As I suspected, there is definitely something wrong with her theory. Yeah, no doubt. Something's off. Wait, something doesn't add up. Oh, really? It's simply not possible for Mr. Faraday to have shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed. Of the order? No. Wait, do we even have the autopsy? Oh, oh, is it here? Wait, is the ink on his left hand? Yeah. He's like, I can't shoot this gun with ink on my hand. It's too slippery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. Autopsy report in the crime scene. That's not the same thing. According to the coroner's report, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, meaning that he died immediately upon being stabbed by the knife. Ergo, he could not possibly have fired the gun after that. But of course. Well then, if the report is correct, then there's only one correct explanation. If we suppose that Mr. Rell attacked first, then Mr. Faraday, who died instantaneously, would have been unable to kill Mr. Rell. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have stabbed Mr. Faraday after he was shot. Then they both died. That is the only explanation that makes logical sense. Negating your opponent's ideas in order to prove your own theory? I see you've been studying, Francisca. I just wanted to explain it to you as simply as possible. Before you foolishly propose a foolish theory that only a foolish fool like you could. Hmm. How naive of you to believe that only your opinions are valid. And still expect to discover the truth that the crime scene offers you. <laughs> Francisca, you've still got a ways to go. What are you talking about? Are you saying there's a flaw in my logic? Mr. Faraday died instantly, and the fact that he did is what gives rise to the contradiction in this scene. The contradiction here in the crime scene is the order of events, the order of the body cell, the evidence bag's location. Well, if we say order of events, she's like, ha, huh, you're stupid. And so let's do that. Yeah. There is a contradiction in the order that you say the crime took place in. Objection! I love how her voice is already completely broken. <laughs> her voice has already changed. Well, I was like, ah, oh, she's 13, she'll have a different voice. But in my mind, like, now that I'm 18 and I, like, I saw the other day I was going back with my friends and I was like, oh, I'm looking at pictures of me at 13. I'm like, I look no different. I, okay, I I'm 23 right no now. No different. I, I look tw I'm 23 right now. I look no different than when I was 16. No, you really don't. Unless I don't shave. H hence why <laughs> you get people who are like, oh, oh have, have a nice have, summer vacation. I'm like, fully employed for like two years now. <laughs> I've graduated college. <laughs> it's kind of nice though, because you'll look young for a while. I know, I'm not complaining. Yeah. It's but just it's... funny, because like in the in the last few months, it's happened five times. Yeah, it's super annoying though, because I was like, oh, like all of my friends look like so different when they were younger. I'm like, I literally look exactly the same. And Francisca looks so much younger. Like she mm -hmm. literally hasn't hit that growth spurt that allows her to look great with like the heeled Combat boots. <laughs> Steel toed combat boots. So she can like kick people, I don't know. She would be the person who'd be like, kick and whip! <laughs> I don't know. Oh, in that case, why don't you prove the contradiction already? Instead of talking about me before I hit puberty. Actually, she has hit puberty. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, remember that we, Von Karmas, must strive to be perfect in every way. Her poor mother. And 
That kind of half-baked answer can hardly be called perfect, now can it? Her poor mom, yeah. She has her as a daughter, Manfred as a husband. Husband? <laughs> actually, She's also going to the spa. I, or actually, to be fair, like, as, Von Karma's a terrible person. He actually seems to treat his family very well, though. I mean, yes, like, it's just different. Why do my friends ask? He's like, can't I do it too? He's like, yes, you're smart. You could go along. Here's, here's the thing that I'm, like, slowly figuring out, though. Like, everyone has different family dynamics and different expectations of what they do. Von Karma strikes me as the person that's like, We're gonna give you the best of everything, but you have to do it, like, really well. Oof. Yeah, and also, he, he would be the person who's like, he's not gonna, like, keep Francisca at home as a child and be like, oh, we're gonna play games. Like, he would be the one who's like, you're gonna go to summer camp and you're gonna learn how to use logic. Like, <laughs> she would be the one who's, like, in academic camp, not be mad about it. But, yeah. like, she just needs an outlet to be in. Like, she's not, mm -hmm. don't leave her alone so she can, like, whip her slight brother. <laughs> we are not playing Monopoly. That game is terrible. <laughs> 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 you want a real game? Here's a chess set. Can you imagine them playing Monopoly? For no, I have to go to jail. <laughs> no, I was about to say, he would, he would be like, I have to go to jail. Edgeworth would try and play, like, a fair player. And like Von Karma would, Francisca would Fran cheat. She would cheat and flip the board, and Von Karma might steal money from the bank as the banker. <laughs> 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 He's sounding more and more like Bowser. <laughs> Mario Which, will never figure this okay. out. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yes. Maybe I should have given a more detailed explanation. <laughs> this is all just going on in Edgeworth. It's like, man, remember that time that we played Monopoly, Monopoly and, and Francisca, Francisca flipped, flipped the board? <laughs> Let's see. Mr. Faraday died instantaneously. And the fact that he did is what gives rise to the contradiction in this scene. This is why I love these characters, because they're all so cool, and they're really weird, and you can imagine Wait, that's the fun right things. One? Oh. The, bodies. Oh. the evidence bag is too far away from the bodies. If the bag that held the weapons was this far from the victims, then neither of the two men could have taken one out without the other noticing. Objection! Heh! <laughs> Weren't you the one who just said? Perhaps Mr. Rell saw a chance and took it out at some point? Now take some responsibility for your own claims! No! I don't want to take responsibility! <laughs> Let me get this straight. What you are arguing is this. Mr. Faraday took the gun from his evidence bag and shot Mr. Rell. Then the wounded Mr. Rell found an opportunity to take the knife and strike back. Oh! Evidence bag, not the bag with the blood in it. I thought they were talking about the bag with the blood in it. I thought he was it. talking about that too. Upon being stabbed, Mr. Faraday died on the spot, and Mr. Rell died thereafter. If that's the case, then how do you explain this? Take a good look at the order in which the bodies are piled. No! Mr. Faraday's body is lying on top of Mr. Rell's. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have died before Mr. Faraday. Impossible! Yes, I agree that it seems strange no matter what angle you approach it from. Which means that the real mystery behind this crime scene that we must okay, solve is... No. Not so fast, Miles Edgeworth. What now? I simply think you ought to think a bit about outside the box. And then even that is even clearer now that the incident started with Mr. Faraday's murderous intent. She sure bounced back quickly. I had to stutter a little bit, though, to get back. <laughs> An explanation won't be enough this time. It's going to take some very decisive evidence to prove her wrong. Part two. What happened, part two? It was just chance that Mr. Faraday's body fell on top of Mr. Bell's. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. The two bodies fell into a pile. Okay. Which indicates that they've attacked each other at the same time. It really doesn't matter in the slightest that they fell in the opposite order. <laughs> I just know that Francisca's explanation isn't absolutely correct. All I have to do is find a hole in her logic. Once I do, I can then present her with the evidence that proves the contradiction. Man, you don't want to get in a, like, mad at her at school. She would tear I, you down. Here's the thing, I'm pretty sure Francisca doesn't have any friends. Oh no, she doesn't. She, she just has, like, acquaintances who are enemies that don't care. Or she's got the people who are just like, mm, whatever. Like, you know... She pr it's probably hard cause if she spends all her time at uh, logic camp. Logic camp? Well, but other kids are at logic camp. Yeah, but logically, they're not also trying to be prosecutors in the Von Karma name. Sure. I feel like Francisca, she would have, like, her little cronies. 
not that they're not like real friends. Think Pink Azula, Ty Lee, and May. Oh. They're they're like business partners or together. Draco, Crab, and Goyle. Sure, <laughs> they're like business partners together. They accept each other and understand the oh, weaknesses no, no, no. and strengths, it's, but they bring each other up. It's like Adam and Jamie, where they're like, we work really well together. We're not friends. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Well, yeah, I feel like that would be her. She would have the people, or she would have the people who are just like, oh, I, I don't really care what you do. And she's like, oh, could you go get my lunch for me? And they're like, yeah, okay. Okay. Like, because they're like, just... Can you take my secret your photos? Yeah, okay, for okay, this guy. Oh my gosh, yeah. About okay. that. <sighs> Pressing someone's testimony in order to gain some time to think. You're a real one-trick pony, aren't you? It's too bad your tricks only work on fools. Th that wasn't my intent. I simply wish for more details as to how Mr. Farnate ended up on top of Mr. Rell. Hmm. That's also really bad fanfiction. Someone's impatient. I was just about to explain everything to you. So do you think you could hold for a minute? Nah! Franziska, I'll make you a deal. I'll hold on if you hold on to that whip of yours. Oh, I'll hold on to it, all right, as I whip you. Grr! Well, now that you've quieted down a bit, I'd like to continue, if you don't mind. The two bodies fell on a pile. Oh, is it the same fate every time? The two fell on top of each other? Don't you find that to be just a bit strange? Not at all. Grr! I can see it in her eyes. She's dead set against me from the bottom of her heart. Miles Edgeworth. Once I'm done here, you'll see that there's nothing strange at all. Now then, the two men fell into a pile. Which indicates that they attacked each other at the same time. What do you mean by they attacked each other at the same time? I assume Mr. Farley <laughs> oh, has yeah. two <laughs> different weapons in his He has yeah. the weird smile. <laughs> Ugh, I forgot about him. Ugh. He's like... <laughs> He's got, a weird, he's got a weird lip smile, but then, like, some of it is, people can look like that for sure. Like, a lot of people, as I figured out, have uneven eyebrows, like, one's higher than the other. But normally you don't draw them like that, so it looks really, really weird. It's not the eyebrows, it's no, the smile. I, oh my gosh. No, cover. His smile looks weird, but from the... Eyes up, he looks like he's trying to Oh, well, no, from the eyes up. He looks like he's trying to do, like, the smolder or something. <laughs> There's a funny how I met your mother. Where it's like, this guy has a creepy smile, but I can't... This guy has a creepy, but I can't tell why. It's, I finally figured it out. It's like, it's like this guy, he got this, like, photo. It's like, like, so it's like, they cover his eyes. It's like, the bottom half of him? He loves you. He's just smiling. He's so happy. He's yeah. it's like, you cover the bottom half. It's like, his eyes want to kill you. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like really, it's basically yeah. the same thing. He made, and he made to attack? <laughs> Yeah, he made to attack Mr. Bell. Oh, I've never heard it phrased like that. Ugh. <laughs> he made to attack Mr. Rell while holding both the knife and the revolver. <laughs> from the and eyes, then. from the nose up, Ms. Mac Rell is just like criminal, hates you. From the like, nose down, it's just like serial XDT. <laughs> he just looks After Mr. Faraday fired the gun, Mr. Rell grabbed the knife as he was falling and stabbed Mr. Faraday. That is how Mr. Rell wound up on the bottom with Mr. Faraday on the top. At close range, that is more than possible. But we're not at close range. Yes, it's possible, but... Well, if you have any other ideas, then show me what you've got. What you really, really got. Oh, I will. And to that extent, I'd like for you to append what you just said to your testimony. Hmm. I don't see any point to that, but as you please. That fact indicates that they attacked each other at the same time, close range, which is false. You're saying that they attacked each other at the same time from close range? Exactly! Mr. Farday pointed the gun at Mr. Rell's chest and pulled the trigger. Mr. Rell then took the knife from Mr. Farday and stabbed him before he fell unconscious. The dead Mr. Farday instantly fell on top of Mr. Rell while from the stabbing, pinning Mr. Rell under him where he died shortly thereafter. And that is how they ended up on top of each other with no contradictions to be seen. Hmm. It just... really doesn't matter in the slightest that they fell in the opposite order. Hold it! Do you really believe that they fell in the exact opposite order in which they attacked? Miles Edgeworth, you're not listening to a word I'm saying. 
Ugh. They both attacked each other at the same time, and Mr. Rell fell first by chance, leaving Mr. Faraday to just happen to fall on top of him. Then Mr. Rell died shortly thereafter, pinning underneath Mr. Faraday. That's how it happened. So the two men attacked each other, with Mr. Rell randomly falling down first. Did, I was about to say, did what's his face die instantaneously, though, Mr. Faraday? Yeah. Yeah, he would normally be the one on the bottom. The fact that the order that they attacked each other in varies from the order they fell in doesn't cause a problem for me. However, there's definitely one certain aspect that I'm having trouble swallowing. It's pretty obvious. Objection! <laughs> so you believe that they killed each other at close range? Sorry, but that's impossible. Just as it is written in the crime scene notes, the firing of the handgun did not leave a gunpowder burn on Mr. Rell's clothes. Therefore, Mr. Rell and the gun must have been separated by a distance of at least two or three yards. Ah! Yes, this is by far the biggest contradiction. The two bodies are piled up on each other, yet the gun was fired from a distance. And with there being no chance that Mr. Rell moved that far after being shot, that leaves only one possible explanation. What a completely foolish line of foolish thought from a foolishly foolish fool! If I'm not right, then who was it that made the first move with the intent to kill, huh? Who? The person that attacked first with the murderous intent? That would be Mr. Farday, Mr. Rell. Neither man. <laughs> Neither man. Von Karma's just like, day two of killing. <laughs> day two? <laughs> Do you think Von Karma just like enjoyed day 30, killing people? Day 30 of the pancake <laughs> breakfast. I don't feel so, so good. <laughs> Mr. Faraday, of course. Hey, pal! What you're saying now contradicts what you said earlier. Well, um... Where did he come from? I have to rethink this, carefully. I think that this will be the same thing. Mr. Rell, of course. You know... Your foolishly foolish foolhardy idea is making me feel just as foolish as you! The murder weapons used in this case were taken straight from Mr. Faraday's bag. The fact that Mr. Faraday had items that could be used to kill in his possession... Is something Mr. Rell wouldn't have known. Nah. Uh, yeah, he would have if he used the gun to kill dead man, which he confessed dead to doing. Dead man, tell no tales. She's right. Mr. Rell wouldn't have known what was inside Mr. Faraday's bag. I have to rethink this carefully. Here in this room, contradictions appear no matter which man we claim attacked first. Thus, there can only be one explanation. There was a third person here. It's probably Detective Bad. Because he was there so quickly. That's true. He was just like, eh, whatever. It was the third person who killed both Mr. Farday and Mr. Rell. And set their bodies up to make it look like a double murder. It also explains why we literally never see this dude later in life. Like, it's true. I feel like if he was the, like, chief senior detective extraordinaire, like, we would have run into him as Phoenix Wright. <laughs> or as Apollo Justice. Unless he's dead. I don't know how old he is. How old is he? Like, 40s? So in this case, which is a flashback case... A flashback case, this dude is... 53. Yep, nope, oh, he's not... So he'll be, be like... 70. Si he'll be 60, I think, in the modern game. In the present. I mean, it's possible. Oh, wait, no, hang on. No, he'll be, like, almost 60. And then Apollo Justice, that's seven years later. Uh -huh. So he'd be almost 70. Uh -huh. Oh. Manny coaching. Hey, oh, I it. forgot about... He's only 24! I forgot! He took... He he's took only 24! Look at that face! He looks kind of. <laughs> he looks like he's in his fifties. <laughs> Not as he's got too much hair to be in his fifties. He looks like he's in his hot. 40s. Not true. Our grandpa still has a full head of hair. And he's yeah, like but in it's white. And also, like our grandpa looks like he Mulder. died. Then. So <laughs> fair <laughs> so enough. <there's> but... that. <laughs> He does um, not look 24, though. No, he doesn't. I forgot. That guy took our... He's late 30s That guy took video. the defense attorney out, right? We're gonna have a triple murder on our hands. He's gonna be like, He's like, hey, babe. baby. Wanna come with me? She's like, no, but I will. <laughs> no, but I will. <laughs> Princess get 13. <laughs> Studying to be prosecutor in Germany back on break. Oh, she's probably at board school. Board school? <laughs> you mean boarding school? <laughs> yeah. I'm bored of school. <laughs> I'm bored of... <laughs> no, boarding school. She's probably at boarding school in Germany. And Von and, Karma and like your camp in the summer. And Von Karma like gives her like howlers in the mail, like you need to be studying harder. She's like study, study harder. Study harder. The fat third person is the real culprit. The fat third person. Miles Edgeworth. There's just one thing you're missing. 
evidence, correct? Exactly. Everything you've said up until now is nothing but a story played out in your head. However, this is where the real test begins. Can you prove that there was a third person involved in the crime? Of course. If a third person was truly here, that fact would resolve the glaring contradiction. The proof that this has all been a setup made to look like they killed each other. I'll present it, and they bear the final piece of the puzzle that's not yet in place. Oh, I think this is where we bring out the bloody bag. Bloody bag! Take that! This is that very evidence. And exactly how is your prosecutor's badge related? Do you think you could explain it to me? Simple. I'm a prosecutor. You're not. <laughs> There's no need for an explanation. Um, well, I have no idea how it's related, so could you please explain it to me? Yes, well, um... Let me guess. You can't explain it, can you? Hmm... Gah! It, it would appear that I was wrong. But there is definitely a contradiction here. And it should resolve itself if there truly was a third person here. I'll just need to go over the evidence and my thoughts once again. The gun in Mr. Faraday's hand, and the plastic bag with his blood on it. These two items point to the presence of a third person. How so? Recall Detective Gumshoe's testimony? I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of the struggle. If there wasn't a struggle in this room, then there shouldn't be any plastic bags on the ground. Meaning that someone else must have deliberately scattered them around. Do you not see the possibility in this? Disregarding the gun for the moment, there's a high probability of blood splatter when a knife is used on a person. If the culprit held the knife with a plastic bag around it, they could use the bag to catch any blood splatter from when they withdrew the knife. <laughs> then, by spreading a few more plastic bags around, mixing the bloody one in with them, and arranging the room to make it look like there was a struggle between the two, they would be able to conceal their presence. <sighs> She's got kind of a derpy face when she does that. Oh yeah, she does. Like when she cries. A little bit. <laughs> but because she's 13. Looks like you've still got a long way to go. Yeah, see, if you look at the window, it looks like an air conditioning unit. But it's a building, apparently. Oh, I kind of see what you, you see were talking what I mean? about now. Yeah, if you just have no, a little if, knob. Yeah, it's just a building. Because the other window doesn't have that. Yeah, if our window's closed. Oh, true. Yes. Objection. That was her objection voice? Yeah. Objection. Objection. <laughs> What, what the heck's up with you, pal? Whoa! The judge is fuming! <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> Can we talk about this? Just, he looks... Okay. Oh my gosh. Just do it with daily aerobics. <laughs> he looks like the... Um... He looks like a Goomba. Like <laughs> the Goomba King. When he's <laughs> like, the Goomba King. When he's getting mad. Mr. Bad, I'd advise you to place Detective Gumshoe under arrest. What? What's the meaning of this? Huh! Looks like you're not man enough to dis discipline your own subordinates. Don't dare. That detective claims he was there standing in front of the door the entire time. But I have it on good authority that it was all a giant lie. Miss Yu, I ask that you please explain that last statement. I'll let his honor explain it himself. Well, I saw it with my own eyes, I tell you. During the recess, there was a period of time when there was no one in the hallway. What? See, Mr. Bad. So I ask you, why would a detective who's supposedly doing his job the whole time want to fabricate such a lie? Go, you. Farted. No! No! Of course not, sir! It would appear that one who set up this whole crime scene is that detective. Which basically renders his testimony a complete lie and wholly invalid. It looks like your perfect logic has just come to a tumbling down, Miles. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of the struggle. I, I'm gonna be so mad if he's like, Oh, I really need to go work in the bathroom. She runs down the hall, and then the whole thing happens in, like, two minutes. Was that statement really a lie? Detective Gumshoe, you're now a suspect in the murder of two men. Now spit out the truth, or so help me. 
I, I haven't lied to anyone, sir. Honest. I really was really there. I was in the hallway the whole time. Detective Bad, I ask that you please do not act without my permission. After all, I am the one that is heading up this investigation, am I not? Don't talk like you know what's going on, boy. This darkness. All I want is for the investigation to be run perfectly. Perfection is the only wish of a disciple of Von Karma, after all. Therefore, before you take Detective Gumshoe into custody, I'd like to set the record straight on something. And what's that? Hmm, what should I ask about Detective- What should I ask Detective Gumshoe about? Motive for the murders, why he wasn't in the hallway, state of the hallway. So we already know he doesn't have a motive for murder, so that's stupid. Um, why he wasn't in the hallway, or the state of the hallway? Probably the state, because he was in the hallway, I suppose it. I suppose the one thing I'd like to clarify, uh, is Detective Gumshoe's motive for committing this crime. Hmm. Motive, uh, Gumshoe. Whoa! You got a grudge against Varda or something? His eyes, they're like all white. He's the tiny little He's the tiny, yeah. tiny little no, sir! Not me! Not a single bad thing against Mr. Faraday, sir! Is that a fact? Objection! Objection! You really have a problem with lying, don't you, Detective Gumshoe? I'm telling you, I am not lying! The more unnatural you act, the more suspicious you become, you know. If you want a motive, Edgeworth, I have one for you right here. Could you please share it with us? However, be forewarned that I won't hesitate to object to flights of fancy. Because all I'm interested in is the perfect explanation. <laughs> oh, you're serious, aren't you? Fine. You amuse me, so I'll humor you with a co little courtroom practice. Oh, so that worked. Wait, that, wait, that's the one we wanted to do! Maybe they all work. Detective Gumshoe, I take it that no one else was in that hallway at any time, correct? Huh? Oh, 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 of course not, pal! You're being awfully defensive. Might you be hiding something from me? W watch your mouth, pal! You can't go around saying stuff like that about me without any evidence! Hmm, I suppose you're right. I have no evidence at this point. Miles Edgeworth, how can you be losing a battle of wits with this, this detective? You're a disgrace! Ugh. Maybe I should ask about something else. I, I didn't realize motive was what you wanted to do. I thought, it was the second, I thought it was the second one. I thought it was the hallway. Why were you missing from the hallway? Oh, no, so, I didn't want to ask about missing. I wanted to ask about the state of the hallway. We just asked about the state of the hallway. Oh. Detective Gumshoe, why were you missing from the hallway for a span of time? Look, pal! Like I said, I was there the whole time, okay? But there is testimony against you that. Miles Edgeworth! Why are you wasting our time with a completely useless question? Mm -hmm. The only logical reason as to why he was absent is that he was busy committing the crime or using the bathroom. Anyone who says otherwise is a fool. Grr. Maybe I should ask about something else. Alright, well let's go back to the motive and I'll do it in a funny way. What? Turbo button. <laughs> Gump shoes mode. <laughs> it was. What? Is she? Oh, she's putting don't, on don't makeup. Don't put on lipstick at this she's time. She's putting on makeup. I thought that was her. I thought she um like painted a her watch. nail. If you look at it, it looks like she's just gonna put her finger in her mouth. Oh. Ooh, <laughs> like this. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. Oh my on. gosh. It was. About a week ago, I saw the detective get chewed out by a living Faraday. Livid. Living Faraday. <laughs> I saw the detective get chewed out by a livid bar Faraday in front of the precinct. He stood there super pale as Mr. Faraday yelled, That's a salary cut for you, you nitwit. A brand new detective suddenly getting a salary cut. That's the reason for enough for a grudge. Well, how's that for the perfect explanation? You, you totally misunderstand me, pal! No matter how mad I get, I could never hold a grudge! Quiet. We can't trust anything you say. Wow, bad! Sir! Hmm, there's nothing wrong with the motive she proposed, per se. But there are some gaps in her logic that need to be filled in. Miss Yu's perfect explanation may not be so perfect I at all. I was about to say, 
Why would he be here if this is his first time at the courtroom? <laughs> to the courthouse! Oh, your salary's cut, pal. Uh, Alright, well, that's all the time we have for uh, these episodes. Thanks fine. for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. We're cross examining Calista Objection. <laughs> like, ev everyone hates her objection. <laughs> Anyhow, tune in next time for that. Until we meet again, my friends. Have a great day, and God bless.